Good afternoon. We are going to start today looking at using a tape model. Um, I'm just going to walk through some of these pieces with you because really these are going to be some really self-explanatory videos that I'd like you to stop at each section, pause with your PLC, watch the video and see if that can give you a clear idea of how to use that tape model for the domain or for the topic that is presented. So we have decomposing number, whole number operations, fractions, both equi equal shares and equivalency. Then we'll look at fraction operations. And at the end, there may be some time for decimal models and even a final slide about expressions. So what tape models do we have? We actually have two tape model pieces that we can be printing from Print Shop. Those are a one page document that come directly from our strategy guides. So you can see that they can be laminated, they can be put into a sleeve, and then students can actually write with markers to draw pictures of their counters or actually put their counters on top of the tape diagram to use concrete objects. So we can do these, um, like I said, in small group. We can do these as individuals need them in the classroom as well. Another example we have of the tape model that we can use is this document here. This document came out probably two years ago and this is for a second and third grade age range. We have number bonds, an area model, the tape model in the bottom corner, and then the number line right to the right. So I can put one problem in the middle and students can solve that multiple ways. Again, with our other tape model, students can physically put their concrete objects right in that tape model to solve it and then draw a picture to record their thinking. Again, these are all accessible to you and if you need these, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or your instructional coach to see if there are any extras in your building. So finally, where can I find these things virtually? I can find these things virtually from the math website going into the elementary math game site, the virtual resources, and then from virtual resources, you'll get to the modeling tools. And you're looking for that center one called thinking blocks. Thinking blocks is a great way to have students visually practice with a computer to build their tape models. It's pretty forgiving and it's also really nice for teachers to be able to model how to do a tape model. So as we think about using a tape model there are a couple things to consider. The idea of pre-segmenting those tape models for students helps make sure they understand the idea of equal. Looking at pre-segmented also in terms of is it proportional? So if I have two numbers, two and five, is the two section the exact same size as the five section? This is a more abstract concept, so we wouldn't start there, but those conversations will come up in your grade levels as students get more comfortable using a tape model. These can be used in and out of a context, and obviously the CPA times two progression holds very true for a tape model, starting with concrete objects directly on the tape model so they can build it, then they can add concrete objects by putting numbers, transition to a pictorial representation. So maybe they started by coming up with cubes of 10. Now I draw 10 cubes. Finally, instead of drawing 10 cubes, I may have transitioned to the point that I can just simply write the number 10 with the equation that matches. Finally, tape models are a wonderful way to reinforce the relationship between the operations. So our first one we're going to look at today is our decomposing number. Again, with each one of these, you're going to have a video that you can stop, pause the video recording here, and watch the video included in the slide deck. So after we've looked at that decomposing with a concrete model, what does it look like with a picture? It looks like 13 here. I'm going to have students take their 13. They have a picture. They've drawn out their 13 counters. And then below that, they're going to determine how they want to break that up and draw those counters into the two spaces. They might do a 10 and a three, but they might decompose it different ways. They might even do a six and a seven. Here's an example where we just have the number 10, and then we have a four and a six drawn in. So we're starting to kind of transition students to an abstract model here, but still using the pictorial representation. Then finally, our abstract model is to do this strictly with numbers. So they would have 10, and three and seven for the parts. Let's take a look at what this would look like with whole number operations. So you can see here, there is an addition and subtraction model that we are using concrete objects on a physical tape model. Students are manipulating, looking to see those relationships. In the top one, you can even see we started investigating the concept of um, the size, the proportion of the parts when we investigate that tape model. 
So now that we've had a chance to watch the videos of the whole numbers with addition and subtraction, on the next slide here we're looking at what does that look like in terms of equal groups and equal shares? So the relationship again between multiplication and division is coming out pretty clearly here when we work with equal groups of objects and then how do I share those equally among groups? Take a moment, watch this video, and then we'll continue on the next slide. So on this page, we are now looking at what does it look like as we transition to a pictorial representation? So you can see here, here's an example of how I would draw my counters to find the total. Looking here, I have 15 to start and I see a six. I'm representing the idea of subtraction. Taking that six, moving it down, would leave me with, uh, let's see, nine left over. Finally, a completely abstract would be a 10 take away three or minus three. If I took those three away, how many would be left for that box? And then the last one, we look at 15 is equal to 5 plus 10. So thinking about inverse of those traditional looking equations for students as they start really looking at what does the equal sign mean. Let's hop over to multiplication and division. In this model, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 counters shown here. And we can see that we're looking for how many go in each one of my four groups. I have the pictorial, and I'm going to be adding in a number on the second example, I don't know my starting amount, but what I do know, I know my group size and I know my quantity of groups. So now I have to figure out how many my total is. Again, this is largely pictorial, and in the top, I likely would have some numbers represented. How does this look if I had all numbers? I might start with 32 divided by four. So I would start with 32 on the top. We're probably not gonna have students draw out 32, but they may need to. They may have out their 32 counters, and then you ask them, what would it look like if I divided 32 into four equal groups? Another step may be taking multiplication or division to look at this problem. I might have the number six written in four of my boxes. So I know that I have blank groups of six to equal 24. I could also ask, what did I start with when I divide it into six that have four equal groups? So I can look at, again, that multiplication and division and how those operations work together. Let's take a look at fractions now. So fraction tiles really are a concrete model of a tape model. So we're beginning with the concrete using folding paper. We transition to those fraction tiles that are pre-portioned for us. And then we end with our tape models being pictorial and abstract. And we're using those pre-partitioned models to really reinforce the equal shares are important. So we have two videos here. We have the first one, which is naming so fractions, and the second one is looking at equivalent fractions. So take a moment, watch these videos to see how this works with concrete models. Now, we've watched the concrete models. This is what it looks like in the pictorial world. So I might have a student who's drawn a tape model with one hole at the top and showing one fourth of the three fourths left over. I might have a pictorial model that has one hole and then I have it represented into eighth size pieces. Finally, I might ask students to investigate if this is one whole, how much is each piece by writing in the numbers as an abstract model. On the right side, we look at and investigate equivalent fractions. So if I look to see what is equivalent to one half, I can see right below that three six from an image. I can look to see three-fourths is equivalent to two, four, six-eighths. As I've worked with the pictorial model and shaded, I will transition to the bottom section where I have the pictorial combined with the abstract, and eventually I likely could just do some of that work abstractly. So after we have our understanding of fractions, we move into fraction operations. We do a lot of work with addition and subtraction with like and unlike denominators. Finally, looking at multiplication using unit fractions by a whole number or a fraction by a whole number. So let's take a look at what this might look like. The first sample are adding fractions using concrete first, and then you can see transitioning to a tape model <coughs> with a like denominator. The section on the right 
shows what does that same concept look like if I have unlike denominators. So we're going to take. Finally, we have some subtraction work to do. We have subtracting fractions with a like denominator on the left and subtracting fractions with an unlike denominator on the right. <clears throat> so how does this look in a pictorial model? Let's take a look. 3 eighths and 2 eighths. I can show that pictorially by shading. Hmm. We have 2 is equal to 1 fourth plus what? How does this show the student thinking so far? <coughs> and at this point, why did students have to add more partitions in? These are providing you some great insights into their mathematical thinking because each larger chunk represents one whole. When I started here, I had fourths covered through two holes, which means these four sections no longer represent fourths, they represent one half. So now students have to have that understanding that we're talking about more than one whole. We're talking about two holes in this example. So I would have one fourth plus how many more fourths to equal two. And I would write that abstractly. Let's take a look at fraction division, or fraction subtraction, I'm sorry. Seven eighths minus four eighths. Hmm. How can students show they're taking four eighths away? They might simply cross out four, or they could remove four pieces or unshade them. Let's look at eight halves minus six halves. So what happens when I have an improper fraction? Well, let's look to see. If each one of those represent one half, I probably should label that these are halves. I needed to have eight halves. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight halves. What happens if I take away six of those halves? I am left with two halves. And I know that two halves is equivalent to one whole. The final operation we're going to look at is multiplying fractions. Here is a look at concrete first, unit fractions, and then whole number by fraction. So let's talk a little bit about how I can use fractions. The first example at the top talks about what happens when I do a whole number by a unit fraction. Here's my pictorial model. You'll notice I am adding an abstract in here because I'm doing four groups of one sixth, and I want to be really clear about labeling each one of those pieces as one sixth. They can start seeing the relationship between four times a unit fraction becomes four six. So the whole number multiplied by the numerator on top actually gives me the answer with the denominator staying the same. Now, that's not a trick I want to teach them, but they are gonna see that pattern pretty quickly when they're doing this with their tape models and other concrete models. What about if I do two times four six or two groups of four six? Here's my first group of four six and my second group of four six. How would I explain this? Well, the next step for students would be to go ahead and label their sixth. How many six size pieces do we see? Well, I see four here and four on the bottom. That would mean eight six. So all of these same operations can be used the same way for decimals. If you and your team would like to investigate expressions, that would be on the next slide. So my fifth grade teachers or my students who are maybe really soaring with these concepts may want to take a look to see how those can be used with more pre-algebraic thinking. I'm going to take a moment now and I am going to show you where I can locate that Tate model resource. So if I go to the very top of my deck, I'm going to get into elementary virtual game site. From here, I'm going to actually just click on virtual resources on the top and I'm going to scroll down to modeling tool. In modeling tool, I'm going to open thinking blocks and this will take you to a large array of different types of thinking blocks or tape models that you can use with your students. This one I really enjoy because you can build your own models and write your own story problems to go along with it. If you enjoy these, you also may have some videos that you can share with your students.